everyone, this is a very quick uh, video about what can go wrong with internal martial arts training and also some also external martial arts too, but the focus is more on internal martial arts here. Um, so a big focus of internal martial arts is the science of power, how to really produce strong power in your body, uh, how to produce impulse momentum. So it, it involves a lot of things, it involves breathing, it involves um, the mind really saturating into the body. Um, loosening the body so the joints really move really well. You can feel into every part of your body. So your body becomes like a whip, has a wave-like power, all sorts of things come in, compressive power. So there's first thing to know is there's three, uh, I guess, speeds for developing power and methods. Method's probably a better word. So first one is the fast track method. It means you get results fast, power fast, compressive power in the body, builds down the end very fast. The problem is that there's a high risk of things going wrong. So you need to be guided uh, with the teacher closely um, and that's where things can really go wrong and that includes an early death okay so i'll explain more about that um, in this post uh, second is that a medium medium speed so you're developing power it's not as dangerous uh, not as risky is maybe a better word and then last way is the slow way which is there's pretty much no no risk at all um, so most tai chi methods they're the slow way uh, and, and in tai chi they say the slow way is the fast way and i understand what they're talking about there um, so I've trained uh, pretty much all three, all three of those methods, and I've had problems with the, the fast track one. Okay, and, uh, and problems is partly because of my personality, um, misunderstanding things, adding things that shouldn't be added. So it's uh, not really following the instructions. Uh, so that's that that was mainly my problem because really no one else in the uh, class got issues like I did. So it's uh, uniquely about me and my physiology too. Um, so it took me to throw me down a track of, you know, how do I unwind this? How can I um, really be aware of the risks that can happen to other people when I'm teaching too? So some things that can go wrong. So it, a lot of it's with the breathing. All body systems are influenced by our breathing. So blood chemistry, um, nervous system, the degree of fight or flight the body feels, blood pressure, um, intra-abdominal pressure, intracranial pressure, intra-thoracic pressure. So they're all dictated by breathing. Um, how, the position of our hips even, the, how open and free our shoulders are, how free our neck is, is to do with breathing. It's, it's amazing. And, and particularly the, the position and shape of the ribcage versus the pelvis. So with breathing being that important, when you start doing compressive breathing, where it's um, uh, like Dantian breathing, there's uh, like a, a pressurized kind of breathing in, into what you're doing. That's when problems can start if you don't know how to monitor that carefully, haven't been guided properly, don't know how to release the pressure, that's really important. So within the training, especially fast track ones, there need to be a way to of releasing pressure. Otherwise, what can happen is a few things. One, your neck gets very stiff, very stiff. The jaw can get very stiff. The cranial bones can lock into a configuration that can cause problems uh, in the head or down further in the spine, in the pelvis. It can relate to problems you get in overuse injuries, in the, uh, the foot, ankle, knee, um, muscles of the legs, the hip, um, lower back, thoracic spine, ribs that are always torsioned and kind of sitting out of place. Um, they all, and, and maybe one sort of jaw issues. All those things can be related to what's happened with your breathing uh, when it's pressurized too much. That's kind of the best case scenario. So you just get stiffness. Worst case scenarios, you start getting migraines. So they can be painless migraines or painful migraines. Migraines like a, a, a pain in the head, uh, constant uh, light sensitivity, uh, and a feeling of nausea or wanting to throw up, that kind of thing. And just feeling like you've got no energy, no chi, you feel really unwell. That's a migraine. And then it can have a shadow effect the, the days after once it's gone even. Um, so pressure change in the body can be generating that kind of thing. Migraines are generally generated or happening in the brain. Pressure changes in the breathing can influence the pressure in the brain too, uh, in a few different ways. Um, and then painless migraines is like you have a visual effect in the in the eyes. It's called a scintillating scotoma. Uh, it's like a, a shimmering um, shape or aura in the in the eye. Um, no headache. Can feel a bit nauseous. Feel no energy. That kind of thing. Stiff neck. Feel like blood pressure is wrong. Heart can be beating fast. That kind of thing. That's a painless migraine. Um, so they're, they're not good. They're a sign that something's not going right. Um, if you need to go see a teacher or and, and especially go see uh, either a chiropractor or a um, osteopath who's trained in craniosacral work that will help you like crazy a good acupuncturist can help you like crazy too um, and the worst case scenario you're building into a stroke 
stroke, heart issues, and aneurysms. They're the biggest ones. Aneurysms is like a ballooning of the artery, or your, the pressure in the artery builds up so much that you start getting hypertension, so that's high blood pressure. Um, that uh, it can bust off plaques that are in the um, in the artery walls, and then heart attack, stroke, uh, pulmonary, pulmonary um, problems, embolisms too. Uh, so they're not good. That's the reason for early death. In, um, and there was a, a story of a, a Chen style in the Chen village, a Chen style practitioner. He died uh, quite young. Uh, I get I get the impression I was in his thirties, but I could be wrong there. Um, and he, he liked to practice Fa Jing a lot, and it was more than what other people would do. And, uh, and when he died, no one really said anything, but they, they all suspected what it was, and it was the, the compression coming from too much Fa Jing, particularly the, how the breath is held um, while we're doing Fa Jing and not releasing the pressure. Um, other, other injuries, um, you know, burst, burst issues, uh, rotator cuff issues, um, Uh, piriformis syndromes, nerve tensions, um, all those kind of things, they can all be uh, driven by poor breathing issues uh, from practice. Um, there'll be more about this clip, it's quite important one I think.